Hello and welcome to Breakfast All Day. How's it going? I'm Christy. That is Alonzo. That is Matt. We all think we're real famous around here in our own little, <laughs> our little film critic-y. Oh, I'm fake famous. Zoomy bubble. We're famous within this, this confines of this Zoom conversation. Um, but in real life, we are not as famous as the wannabe influencers in Fake Famous, which is this very eye-opening documentary that Alonzo will tell us about. So yeah, this just premiered on HBO Max. It's uh, written and directed by Nick Bilton, who has written for Vanity Fair and the New York Times about uh, social media issues. And he decided to explore the notion of the influencer and where they come from and what makes them influential and how does this whole Ponzi scheme of getting followers and 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 selling your followers stuff that you got for free uh, work. So he found um, three people with fairly small Instagram footprints, uh, an actress named uh, Dominique, a, uh, a musician and clothing line entrepreneur named Chris, and a, um, you know, gay guy who looks good with his shirt off named Wiley and uh, <laughs> basically goes out of his way to sort of create these much more fabulous Instagram persona. So they rent a house and use the locations to make it look like they're on a vacation or they're staying at some fabulous resort. Because the idea is if you pretend like you're staying at a fabulous resort, then real resorts will give you a free trip uh, so that you'll like, you know, uh, Instagram about it. And he, uh, Nick is constantly hiring bots, not only to beef up their uh, follower account, but then also to give them fake likes and fake comments so that the doesn't look like they have all these followers, but no one is interacting with their photos. And um, we see that for Chris and Wiley, they get uncomfortable with it in various ways. But for Dominique, because she is an actress, and so often when you go into auditions, they want to know what your social media following is like, uh, it winds up being a, a sort of bonanza for her. She gets auditions. She gets tons of free shit. She gets sent on like modeling shoots. And it's all based on having all these followers and all these commenters that are not real. And so uh, you have to wonder like, where does this become the GameStop Beanie Baby Dutch Tulip thing uh, where it's going <laughs> to fall apart? We're not there yet because you're still getting free shit because you allegedly have all these followers, even if they do not, if they, they're only, you know, just like created by an algorithm somewhere. So yeah, this is creepy and fascinating. <laughs> Did you guys know all of this stuff? Ish. Yeah. I, I knew about the bots. I didn't realize you could you could pay more and get bots that would make comments. That's I, the thing, yes. Yeah, and I didn't know about the fake vacation stuff, which is genius. They're like with a kiddie pool and, you know, like these backyard trees. The toilet together. seat. The toilet seat. The toilet, the toilet seat. seat. Oh my God, the toilet seat's fucking That's amazing. Genius. Explain, explain that. No, 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 no. Let, so, let them, let them okay. discover right. the toilet seat. Yeah, right. no. Um, um, yeah, I, I knew, of course, that you could buy followers because mm -hmm. clearly like half of Trump's Twitter followers are bots of some sort right. and you could buy followers but yeah I didn't realize that you then had to buy likes and comments so that it didn't look totally conspicuous that you have like a hundred thousand followers but right. only 27 likes on a picture <laughs> and I it's, it's horrific in a lot of ways and it's an addiction in a lot of ways, like you have to keep feeding the beast like 24 seven, you have to keep like putting things on Instagram stories so that your story is the first little circle that appears when people log on. Um, it made me weirdly appreciate the hustle. It made me appreciate the work that goes into it. And like, I wouldn't want to do it. It'd be easy to say, oh, this person just like walks down the street holding a purse and it's glamorous and easy, but it's constant it's constant work and what's fascinating to me too was the whole wag the dog element of it like when dominique wears a pair of shoes and tags them on instagram she then gets that company to contact her and say hey do you want to do a collaboration yeah then wears more shoes for free <laughs> but it's but it's all such a house of cards because yeah. like we, we want to reach out to your hundreds of thousands of followers and it's like but how many people is that really you know like it's at what point do the people who are giving out the free stuff realize we're not getting a return for this because there's nobody really following those accounts you it's know? all in the ether well then like some of these companies like actual real corporations will do an audit to find out you right. know what percentage of your followers are legitimate accounts but 
when they did that. The filmmaker does it at one point. The filmmaker does it and it comes back with a glowing report, which then he asked, oh. so maybe that's a scam too. That's too, fake right? too. Yeah. So Amazing. I have a very, yeah, like I actually kind of low-key really dug this movie. Uh, yeah. and I'm and I'm disappointed that because we see in the movie like COVID brings the whole thing to a grinding halt. Right. Um, or does it? And well, a lot of people sometimes manage to just keep you know, these photos. Right. They but still I, go on vacation, quote unquote, right? <laughs> right. But I but I would be fascinated to see how far they could have gotten without COVID standing in the way. Because I've sure. been pretty far. And I will admit there was a side of me like, I was kind of taking mental notes from some of this shit while I was watching. <laughs> and partly, no, it's partly because that's my job, right? Like partly like yeah. The job is to make sure that movie phone or wherever else I'm working for grows. And, and it was, and I was fast, like some of this stuff I knew, I knew that you could buy followers. Um, I did not realize that the arms race, so to speak, of how the programmers that do that, the, the quote unquote hackers that find the loopholes in the system now know that you need to have comments and the comments have to be a certain quality and the timing of the followers so that the algorithm on Instagram doesn't catch scope them. them out and catch them. But by the same token, it's very telling. And I totally agree. I totally understand this is that Instagram and Facebook, like the last thing they want to do mm-hmm. is start talking about the box, right? Like Twitter right. kind of crap, crack down right. on it. Because but their ad like, rates rely upon their, their ad own rates numbers. rely on that. And it's, it's similar to, scheme. well, but it's, you know, look like, we had decades of Nielsen ratings, right? And the Nielsen mm. ratings, for those people that don't know, are an extrapolation. They are not actual hard numbers. The Nielsen ratings are based on a sample set, right? Yeah. And they put samples. One household represents 100 One household represents household. a certain amount of yeah. people. And, and so they extrapolate what the numbers are. But the dark side is that if you start watching something that doesn't, fit their modeling and is way off, they'll come and take your box away. Um, and the thing is like, look, those of us that are in the industry and cover it know that, and the advertisers know it too, or I'm sorry, the agencies, the marketing groups, you know, the, the ad agencies know that, but the CEO of a lot of these companies that will do the advertising doesn't necessarily get that. So it's this, yes, it's this Ponzi scheme scam, but at the end of the day, the sucker with bags and bags of money is the person running Coca-Cola, is the person (laughs) running Nabisco that doesn't, because even if the marketing person at that company knows, they still can go up the ladder as long as their boss, as long as like the board doesn't quite get it, those guys, like the whole scam works. And I get it. And it's, yeah. And the whole thing is, it, it's so vapid because it's basically doing what advertising has always been designed to do, which is to make you feel like shit because you don't own a certain thing or you haven't mm-hmm. accomplished a certain task that can be purchased. You know, uh, the, there's that scene where um, uh, Dominique goes uh, on the, the, there's like a big bus to Vegas mm-hmm. with a bunch of other influencers and they stop along the way and do these photo shoots and they all get to Vegas and do the photos, whatever. And along the way, like, People on the bus are not talking to each other. They're all staring at their phones. They're all updating. They're all like just relentlessly cataloging each moment of their lives. Be the beast. Yeah, it's just (laughs) it's it's all very unsettling. But but this is it's told in a really interesting way. And all the all the fucking you know like the stupid Paul Smith wall that everybody takes selfies at is like right by my house. Right, the pink wall. People will stand in line. For those of you who have never seen it or don't live in LA, it's this bright like Pepto pink wall, and people will stand in front of it and take selfies and they come from all over the world to stand in front of a pink wall and take a picture and that's yeah. the poster for the film um yeah and the conclusion that they come to i mean this is all fascinating and horrific but the conclusion they come to is as, as you mentioned alonzo is the paradox that everyone's trying to seem accessible and relatable and like look at me i'm just like you I, you can do this too but you really can't because you have <laughs> to spend money on photo shoots and lighting and bots and so this incredible luxurious lifestyle is not accessible to you is actually very alienating and even if you're like kim kardashian who is the queen of this mm-hmm. thing like even she is a total shill for like you see her 
plugging these products that you know just got handed to her with a check and so it's just like it's all it is all artifice from the top down it's so uh, it's very bizarre i i will share a story about i actually have two stories about getting free stuff um <laughs> one which i haven't back when i was you guys remember when i went on that run of posting different shirt patterns every day yeah. for like three months oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um so the fine folks at tommy bahama sent me uh -huh. a gift card because i kept tagging them in the <laughs> times that i would wear tommy bahama shirts so that shit worked now yeah. granted it helps that i have a few thousand followers on twitter but that absolutely worked um the other part of this the other story is one of the uh publicity companies you know from time to time we get swag right especially around home video stuff mm. um we've all gotten them uh you know i used to get tons of toys from hasbro because we talk about them on rotten tomatoes and all that kind of stuff yeah i get um, off I, sometimes they'll send you that stuff but sometimes they'll ask you first will you do an unboxing video and i'm like no if that's what like, you want then, that? then don't send it to me you know the <laughs> unboxing videos are crazy popular so yes. um i got something that i just actually just today i got something that i'm gonna post about for movie phone because the publicity company asked hey do sure. you want this will you do a post sure why not it's the company okay. Big deal. Um, here is how my, uh, I have to show you the picture of the label of what it says. Oh, Matt actually oh. influenced her. Oh. <laughs> you influence me all the time. It's like <laughs> influencer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, Dave and I purchased, uh, the, did y'all know that Mariah Carey has a cookie company? <laughs> She does. We we bought some Mariah's cookies yesterday, and I was going to take a picture and post it on the Linoleum Life Instagram to promote our food podcast. And after watching this documentary, he's like, "Do not post that. If we are not going to be fucking influencers." Like, but no, if you, you totally post should. it, you get more free cookies. But Who he was want more he free was cookies? so put off by the people in this movie and what they do. He was like, "We are not ever doing any of that." That's <laughs> well, really funny. Nick, I mean, Nick Nick likes to watch Camp Cretaceous on Netflix, animated Jurassic Park movie or Jurassic okay. Park series rather mm -hmm. and one of the characters is a, an influencer named Brooklyn hey guys it's your girl Brooklyn hey Brooklanders we're gonna unbox this I heard her things called <laughs> unboxing Brooklyn and oh. then you know that, that's why yeah. she's at Camp Cretaceous <laughs> I mean I get the unboxing because you know I mean look like Apple when you buy an Apple product for 20 years, you buy an Apple product and, and the packaging it comes in is fucking gorgeous, right? Uh -huh. And they knew that part of their brand was making that an experience. And it's been like that for decades and other companies have figured that out. And it is all part of the experience of ordering something and receiving it. And yeah. I, I mean, look, there was a side of me who was watching this movie. I kept thinking, I'm like, I bet if I was still in my 20s, I could be really good at this. Um, <laughs> you wanted to hustle I, like that because it's work, right? Well, it is work. And it's also like, it is work. I think it's more work for women than it is for guys, yeah. definitely. Um, but my other thought was- If you had a you know, nine got, pack though, you could, you know. Well, sure. <laughs> um, but my other thought was, they say you have to post four times a day. I was like, yeah, that's doable. I, I can see that. Four times a day is not that much. Okay, we'll work, <laughs> work on that and get back to us. Right, so when, when Breakfast All Day suddenly has millions of followers, right? Millions of Let's followers. Let's do an experiment. Let's I see mean, if we can the other part, pump it up. Well, that was one of the things that I was really <laughs> impressed by was like, you can buy bots that will download your SoundCloud songs. Right. Right, which then makes me think or like- Or buy your book. <laughs> or buy your book or- listen to your podcast like <laughs> okay anyway i'm saying eight i found this quite eye-opening and horrifying but i also came to appreciate the the work that goes into it i did i say seven or seven and a half you said seven seven yes okay uh i said eight because i got really good notes awesome <laughs> um and so 7.7 7 is our number so fake famous is now on hbo max who can tell me what the internet was and how it almost destroyed mankind in 2017? Hey, listen, if I were to be <laughs> tagging geeky tikis in every one of our videos that I use, well, believe me, they'd start sending them to me. Do it. Well, uh, only, only if they're going to send stuff to Christy and me. You don't get the, like, you know. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> no. Don't I don't need anything. Stuff. I don't, I don't want no, 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 please. Want less stuff, not more. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel because of algorithms. Please. <laughs>
Uh, we're so bots. needy. Come on, bots. We're bots. so bots. needy for love. Bots. Bots. <laughs> Follow us at Be Fast All Day on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, <laughs> check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Be Fast All Day. That's where the action's really happening. Uh, we'll be talking about WandaVision. We'll be talking about Bridgerton and so much other stuff. It's so fun. You'll love it. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye.